the more productive I end up being, the more I accomplish, and then not like killing myself if I don't get shit done that day. But don't feel like you have to be working for the sake of working. I think that's a trap that a lot of people fall into. You'd be better off just throwing the, the Kindle audiobook on and going for a walk. Most of our good ideas do come from boredom. We don't give ourselves space to be bored anymore. Let some of those ideas process. We download all this information. We need to synthesize it, and then we need to see what comes out our heads from it. Well, that kind of hit me. I'm like, damn, you're right. I guess, you know, we're doing something right. We're talking about business. We're talking about wealth and growing. And most people, I mean, so that's why there's the 1%. There. There's just so much interesting stuff out there. And, and yeah. we're made to not absorb it. Like, like, just random. I'm reading a book right now on electricity and how, like, our bodies are electric before they're chemical. And over the last several hundred years, we've literally powered the entire world with electricity. What kind of impact is that having on our biology? Mm -hmm. I would rather go find the answer to that question. Um, and, and the answer is like, it's like a fish trying to figure out what water is at this point, because we're literally surrounded by all of it. But I would rather spend time trying to figure out that answer. And, you know, will that knowledge make me better rather than staring at the blue screen and, you know, hoping my quarterback throws a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So it sounds like you're also just naturally curious too. I mean, I think most of us are, but some people, no, I think like most said, of us are. Yeah, yeah. We just get beat. Like I look, cause I look around, I observe it. And I think people just get beat into these routines and they're just fed enough information where, you know, if you just watch the news all day and, and that's just what you do, you, you're, you're very like within the lines where the reality is like, all of this is so much different and we can create it. That's the cool part. We can create it. If we know why we're here, in this way, like why does media even exist, then we can potentially reach in and just dent it a little bit and influence it just a little bit. Wow, that's so powerful. So what would you recommend to somebody that's struggling right now? It, like they're just, you know, they're even if they're building a business right now, maybe they're in their routine and they're just struggling mentally, what would you say to them? It depends where they're at, because if, if it's just like the average person struggling, just nuke all fucking social media. Mm. Just nuke all of it. I don't think they're going to even find a good idea there. I just don't. I think you nuke all social media and you start asking yourself, like, how can I make money and how can I make enough money so that I can take control of my time? Because once you can take control of your time, you can start to do all the other stuff. But you can't do all the other stuff until you have control of your time. Um, so I really am big on that nuking social media shit. Don't listen to people like me. Don't listen to people like you. Don't listen to to Luke Belmar. You know, right. like no one, no one cares what Luke Belmar's theory of money is if they can't fucking have control of their day to begin with, you know, right. like it's just a different type of, of mental porn until then. Um, so I guess that'd be nuke that'd be social mine. media. That's a good one. You know, why? be also because I really do notice that like the average screen time is like four hours or more for some people, some people even like eight hours of just literally mindless scrolling. Like that's crazy. That's a full-time consum job. Consumption and yeah. And like you said, I, I think some people think it, it it's work that's being done, but actually a lot of it is just harming your own mental models, like your own mind in general. It's probably better to just cut that shit out and just focus on how you can make money right now. That's that's wise. So next I wanna so we're we're wrapping this up soon, but I, I know you're probably busy, but I, I wanna ask you what are what does your routine look like now versus what it looked like when you started Genius, for example? That's a good question. Um, this has changed a lot over the, the years. Like I have a, when I'm in Puerto Rico and it becomes kind of, I guess, more location dependent, I try to like develop like a routine that works for that area and that time. Cause I think most progress is made from kind of consistent routines in a good way. But like Puerto Rico, I wake up with the sun. I, right now I'm doing this like beef tallow, uh, uh, methyl blue like solution, you know, kind of helps absorb sunlight and shit like that. And I'll go walk on the beach first thing in the morning, come back, pour into a little work, maybe make some coffee, some more work. I train most of my day is around. Uh, I, most of my routines get planned around training now at this point, whether that be MMA or weights or whatever. But here in Puerto Rico, my MMA coach comes over around 11, you know, we work on whatever we're working for. I'll eat, I'll chill for a little bit. I'll get back to work. I'll do, and then I'll, I'll leave the afternoons just open. Like I don't do a lot of calls. I don't put a lot of stuff on the calendar. I need room for creativity. Like, you know, Wednesdays I'm often shooting content. Um, and that's what I try to do. I try to have like my, my baseline pillars and then I try to give myself a lot of space. 
Mm. And was it the same when you began Genius? No, I, you know, it was really, there, I mean, there was one point where I tried to like hyper optimize every bit of my schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's like, it's, it's varied a ton. But I, I think at the, I had a good routine of Genius at one point where I would dedicate like an hour in the morning to reading. I would, I, I, I guess I've just found that the more space I give myself and the less I try to hyper optimize, the more productive I end up being, the more I accomplish and then not, not like killing myself if I don't get shit done that day. Like sometimes right. that just, it just is what it is. Right. I mean, if you have stuff you have to do, do it, but don't feel like you have to be working for the sake of working. I think that's a trap. A, a lot of people fall into, you'd be better off just throwing the, the Kindle auto, you know, like the, the audio book on and going for a walk because most of our good ideas do come from boredom. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of like boredom was, is a, is a function of biology. And we don't give ourselves space to be bored anymore. You know, that's like a, a scientific fact We're we're plagued with cheap dopamine. And so with that, our creativity gets ruined. So I guess that's been one of my other big adjustments recently has just been giving myself the space to let some of those ideas process. We download all this information. We need to synthesize it. And then we need to see what comes out, you know, of, of our heads from it. So, um, but I couldn't tell you in the early days of genius, like exactly. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, like I, I kept trying to develop routines and some would work, some wouldn't. I remember being over-optimized though. I didn't like yeah. that.